that is entitled The False GOP Claim That the Depart Justice Department is Spying on Parents at School Board Meetings. I'd like to insert this article into the record. Without objection. It's good to see you, Mr. Attorney General. Thank you, Senator. I will quote from the first sentence of your memo. In recent months, there has been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threat of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff who participate in the vital work of running our nation's public schools. This is a fact. We have all seen the news coverage of people actually threatening to hurt school board members for going about their jobs. That is a fact. So when I listen to my Republican colleagues uh, going on about the, the intent of this memo, I'm again reminded of uh, that they often take the position to not believe what we, uh, that we should all not believe what we see with our own eyes. It's like characterizing the January 6th insurrection as just a bunch of tourists visiting the Capitol. Give me a break. We now see a Supreme Court weaponized to support the position of the most conservative causes. We see a rush to the Supreme Court on cases involving abortion rights, gun rights, LGBTQ rights, voting rights, union rights. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General, for making the protection of our civil rights one of the department's core priorities. I want to turn to the need to combat hate crimes. It's been about five months since President Biden signed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act into law, and I sent a letter to you last month requesting an update on the department's implementation of the act and its efforts to reduce hate crimes and hate incidents. Yet another thing that we have all seen with our own eyes, the rise in hate crimes during this period of the pandemic. Mr. Attorney General, would you briefly describe the actions that you and the department have taken thus far to implement the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act? Thank you, Senator. Um, even before the act, I had issued a memorandum within the department uh, to assess how we were dealing with uh, hate crimes and to better uh, organize the manner in which we were doing that. And then um, we're grateful um, that the Congress passed um, the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. Uh, since then, I issued an, uh, a subsequent memorandum based on what the Associate Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General had provided uh, in terms of the department's progress under that act. And I believe we have now implemented everything uh, that was required of us in the act. But that, of course, doesn't mean we've solved hate in America. Mm -hmm. But we have done the things that the statute has asked us to do. We have, I've appointed a coordinator for all hate crimes matters. I've, appoint, uh, uh, um, I've appointed a uh, expediter in the Civil Rights Division's uh, criminal section to expedite our investigations. Uh, we've established a task force um, um, of federal law enforcement and um, U.S. attorney's offices meeting with state and local law enforcement uh, to coordinate, to explain, to develop strategies uh, with respect to hate crimes. We've had trainings for state and local uh, territorial um, and tribal law enforcement to help them recognize um, these circumstances. Um, we've asked for... Uh, uh, we've established a, a language coordinator, a uh, facilitator, um, so that um, our, our um, a memorandum and uh, press releases in these regards can be translated appropriately. And we've asked for a considerable additional funds in our appropriations uh, so that we may give more money to state and locals, uh, tribal um, and territorial uh, law enforcement to assist in these matters. I appreciate the, the efforts you have, you have taken, and I, I, I think that this will result in, of course, some factual information about the, incident, the, the extent of hate crimes and incidents in our country so that we can better prevent and uh, prosecute as uh, appropriate. You've been asked before, I think, in, in the House hearing about the China in initiative. If we end the China initiative, Will we no longer go after economic espionage and uh, uh, IP threat by China? There, there are two issues here that we always have to keep um, um, uppermost in our mind. Uh, one is that uh, uh, the People's Republic of China is a serious threat mm -hmm. to our intellectual property. They're, they represent a serious uh, threat with respect to uh, espionage. They represent a serious respect with respect to 
uh, cyber incursions and ransomware uh, in the United States. Um, um, and and um, we need to protect uh, the country against this. Um, 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 and, and we will, and we are, are bringing cases in that regard. Uh, the other thing that always has to be uh, uh, remembered um, is that uh, we never um, investigate or prosecute based on um, uh, ethnic identity, uh, on what country a person is from or came from or their family. Thank you. Came from. I'm sorry, were you, That's all right. were you done? Yeah. Uh, the reason I ask about the China Initiative is that uh, under the previous administration, which instituted this so-called initiative, that uh, there appears to have been um, racial profiling, which basically ruined the lives of a number of Chinese people. And I want to give an example. The Justice Department, previous administration, dragged Dr. An Ming Hu, a professor at the University of Tennessee, through a two-year espionage investigation, causing him to lose his job. At the end of the investigation, DOJ lacked any evidence of espionage and instead charged Dr. Hu with wire fraud and false statements for apparently failing to disclose his association with a Chinese university on a NASA grant application. His trial ended in a mistrial, after which a juror said she was, quote, pretty horrified by the lack of evidence, end quote. When DOJ sought a new trial, the district court granted Dr. Hu's motion for an acquittal, finding no harm to NASA and no evidence that Dr. Hu knew NASA's funding restriction applied to Chinese universities. So I would say from your answer that regardless of whether we have something called the Chinese Initiative, you have no intention of not paying attention to espionage and other bad acts by China. So I'd say we should get rid of this, this, what? This initiative that results in racial profiling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Kennedy.